Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Uh, welcome to my first lecture on Markov decision process. Uh, Markov decision process is uh, one of the most widely used tools in stochastic decision making and optimal control theory. Uh, basically this process is uh, used by uh, the, com the community of control systems as well as by the community of artificial intelligence and in this sense uh, this is a multidisciplinary uh, tool that i personally have been using for about 10 years and i have published uh, many papers involving the applications of markov processes in in many domains so that is why i am going to start a new lecture series which will be around uh, the theory regarding markov processes and the of course the matlab uh, coding related to markov decision processes so what is a Markov decision process? A Markov decision process is a tool for sequential decision making. Sequential decision making in the presence of uncertainty uh, is uh, something that we come across in everyday life. Uh, for example, um, making plans, making decisions regarding uh, any like regarding the achievement of any goal or even making high level uh, decisions regarding the trajectories or path planning or uh, other issues uh, involve uh, you know uh, can be uh, addressed by using markov decision processes a decision making problem is modeled as a markov decision process and then Markov decision process is solved using an iterative algorithm. So algorithms which are used to solve Markov processes are already uh, developed and you just have to use them. But the innovation comes here. Uh, so you look at a new problem which has not been solved before or maybe which has been solved but not uh, has been solved using a Markov process. And then you uh, develop a markov process model for that problem and then you can solve that process to get the optimal decision making policy so solving the markov process means that out of this model of markov process you get optimal decision making policy what is inside the model of a markov process i will get to that very soon Solution of a Markov process is an optimal policy for the original decision making problem. Optimization is with respect to expected value of the discounted reward function. What is the meaning of discount and what is the meaning of expected value? So this expected value is the same thing that you study in the probability theory in undergraduate uh, uh, engineering curriculum or any other undergraduate curriculum if you have studied any standard course in probability theory you know what expected value is it's sort of like a, a stochastic mean value or average value uh, discounted reward function means that the reward functions are appropriated with respect to whether we are getting reward right now or or the reward is coming after some time so basic assumptions is that the states and actions are discrete and finite uh, usually in control system theory we use uh, continuous time states and the control signal is also continuous time uh, al although there is the discrete time or digital control systems where states and actions are discrete so in markov processes um, states and actions can be discrete or continuous but since we are uh, i'm i've all only used uh, finite markov processes or finite state space markov processes so I will assume that states and actions are discrete and finite. Then reward function and transition probabilities do, do not change with time. That means that um, the value or worth of a state or cost of an action is uh, predetermined. Uh, and uh, as the time passes, the cost of an action or value or reward associated with the state does not change. Uh, this assumption can also be relaxed if you are uh, dealing with finite horizon Markov processes. Uh, later on in the coming lectures, uh, I will have separate lecture on what is the difference between finite horizon and infinite horizon Markov processes and how can you have reward function and transition probabilities uh, varying with time and still be able to solve the problem using Markov processes. Uh, but so far but for now you just uh, we just stick to the 
fixed reward function and fixed probability function each variable in a markov process take on integer values so this is just for simplicity uh, although it's not i mean all of these assumptions can be relaxed but you know for starters we just uh, keep our life simple by uh, having these assumptions so this is what an, a Markov process model look like. A Markov process model has basically five ma major ingredients. First of all, you need to know the states of the system and what are the possible decisions uh, available in each of the states. And you need to know the reward function, uh, which will tell you which states are better to be in, which states are desirable and which states are not desirable. Uh, so there could be a single state that is desirable to you and there could be multiple states which are desirable so there there is kind of flexibility in the markov process as compared to the classical control system where you know you have this uh, desirable trajectory or you want to stabilize the system so there is only uh, you know limited uh, uh, desirable states but here uh, desirability can vary so uh, some states can be more desirable some states can be less desirable and so on transition probabilities tell you that uh, what are the probability of reaching from one state to another state uh, using some action so usually transition probabilities are function of states and actions so given that you are in in a certain state and you execute a certain action what is the probability that you reach certain other state that will be uh, encapsulated by the transition probabilities then there is discount factor discount factor basically works on the reward that you uh, achieve right now versus the reward that you achieve in future so if discount discount factor value ranges between 0 and 1 if the discount factor is close to 1 that means that the reward right now is almost as good as reward that will be received after certain decisions but if discount factor value is less than one let's say 0.5 or something then re reward that you achieve right now is mu worth much more than the reward you achieve after certain decisions so this fa factor is there in the model just to um, you know uh, capitalize the uh, just to um, encapsulate the situation that in some decision making problems you want to optimize uh, things uh, quickly uh, rather than rather quickly than than slowly okay just a little bit more detail about the states i am gonna make this video very short because this is just an introductory video uh, uh, states are non variables in the problem and value of the variables may change deterministically or following a probability distribution but at least one of the variables may change uh, following a probability distribution uh, otherwise you don't have to use markov decision process because uh, the markov decision process is a decision making tool in the presence of uncertainty if there is no uncertainty then there are other tools you can use uh, like for example integer programming or so uh, a combination of the values of the variables is a state so there could be multiple variables in a decision making problem for example you want to uh, do a path planning for uh, um, for a drone then uh, the variables could be the position the velocity and maybe some goal related variables uh, for example whether the data has been collected uh, from certain uh, you know area or certain picture has been taken or not that would be a variable as well so the the variables in the problem uh, make up uh, the states so all possible combinations of the variables in the problem that will create the whole state space in the markov decision process model a state is basically a situation so given us a certain situation what what decision will you make what decision is the optimal decision to make that is what marco process helps you in 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 doing so whenever you have to make optimal decisions uh, given a certain situation situation is depicted by the value of the state variables uh, 
a particular instance of a values of state variables is called a state so state is just a you know a basically a combination of the values of state variables some situations are good some situations are bad that is depicted by the reward function so we will see that um, yeah, soon some situations are rare uh, some situations are frequent this is determined by the transition probability function so if the situation has a low probability of reaching if some if there is a low probability of reaching certain state then that is a rare state and if if there is a high probability of reaching certain state then this that is a frequent state and some states may be such that if you reach those states then uh, with probability one you stay in those states those are called terminal states then actions are the decisions to be made under a given situation set of available decisions may be same or may depend upon the situation and uh, some decisions may have uh, an associated cost or reward with the, with them and um, uh, some decisions could be like free of cost cost of a decision may be different under different situations as well so for example a same the same decisions when you take in a certain state uh, may have cost uh, a and if you take the same decision under another state then it might have cost b uh, outcome of a decision uh, may be random so you when you take a decision in a certain state uh, the outcome or transition of the state of course uh, it will be usually random sometimes uh, the outcome of a decision may be deterministic as well in some problems uh, the decision related variables are deterministic but there are some other variables which are not affected by the decision but uh, they are still part of the problem and the decisions are aware of those random variables uh, we will uh, as we go along with more uh, i will also explain my own research papers and i'll show you some examples where you know there are some deterministic variables related to decision making and some other random variables uh, there should be at least some randomness involved in the outcome of decisions otherwise no need to use a markov process this is same thing uh, that i uh, talked about when i uh, the same thing which i said when i talked about the states uh, same applies to the actions as well reward or cost are indicator of which states are good versus which states are bad and it also indicates the cost associated with uh, the decisions uh, for infinite loop decision making uh, the reward costs are usually fixed uh, which is called infinite horizon markov process uh, uh, basically um, yeah uh, since this is not going to be about this on this is not going to be my only lecture on markov processes there is a lot to talk about markov processes um, i will get into infinite versus finite horizon processes in the later lectures for finite loop decision making the reward cost uh, of a state may depend upon iteration of the loop so in each iteration the decision making uh, in each iteration of the decision making loop the reward or cost may be different uh, for the same action state pair then the transition probabilities must follow markov property and uh, no dependence markov property means that the transition to the next state depends upon the current state only it does not depend upon the history of states uh, i will also talk in future about how to uh, convert a history dependent problem into a markov problem because uh, there are so many problems convertible to uh, markov problems and markov processes have been so widely used uh, the only restriction in the use of Markov processes is the computational power of the computers uh, since the computers uh, are much more stronger now than they were a few years ago Markov processes are more uh, and more uh, relevant nowadays than they were when they were developed so Markov process was developed in 1957 or you know late 1950s uh, it was the bellman who uh, came up with the idea and uh, but at that time it was very hard to implement them because of the lack of computational powers but now we have uh, a lot of computational power so a lot of problems can be solved using markov processes 
so probabilities uh, can be developed using the statistical data related to the problem and for infinite loop decision making the probabilities are usually fixed uh, just like reward function and uh, for finite loop decision making probabilities may be different in each iteration just like the reward function all right so discount factor its value is between 0 and 1 the value close to 1 requires more computations in the calculation of the decision policy but the policy is long cited like i said that you know uh, for values close to 1 uh, distant states will have uh, almost as equal value as are the immediate states uh, for value close to 0 the the computational requirement is less so marco process is solved by uh, iterative processes and uh, it uh, turns out that if the value of cam discount factor is close to 1 then the number of iterations required to uh, solve a process is more and if the value is close to 0 then the number of iterations required to solve the Markov process is, is less so again uh, we are uh, going to talk about Markov processes uh, later on as well so how do you solve a Markov process uh, the algorithms uh, which are available to solve a Markov process are called the stochastic dynamic programming for example policy iterations algorithm value iterations algorithm these are the two most popular algorithms then linear programming is also used to solve Markov process model so once you have the model once you have all the five components of the model then you can solve that model to develop optimal policy using any of these algorithms we will talk about them in future uh, Bayesian networks uh, dynamic Bayesian network based methods are also there so you just for example if you want to use Markov process uh, and you know you develop all these five components and put them into a value iteration algorithm uh, to solve for the Markov process so I'm not going to go into the example in this lecture I'm I'm, I'm going to finish this lecture just by showing you three books uh, one book is artificial intelligence a modern approach by Russell and Norvig so you can go uh, get the third edition of this book and uh, this book discusses Markov decision processes I'm unable to access this page uh, then there is a book approximate dynamic programming solving the curse of dimensionality by Warren Powell this is a very good book uh, for advanced users of Markov process and this is the classical book Markov decision processes discrete uh, stochastic dynamic programming by Martin L. Putterman so the all, among all these three books for the beginners I will recommend this uh, artificial intelligence a modern approach this book is very widely used uh, in the world and I will highly recommend that you get this book it's also available in the uh, India and Pakistan uh, the low priced editions are available so with that I conclude my lecture on uh, Markov processes with more lectures to come and I can tell you that I have published many many papers uh, uh, using the Markov process and I am hoping that you will uh, do you can do